Does having more muscle make you more attractive? It's a good question. One of the main reasons that people get into lifting is to attract a partner. But are all those hours in the gym actually worth it? I wanted to find out, so I asked 50,000 people. Do you think more plates equals more dates? Girls care more about your personality, not so much like how much weight you're lifting. If you're really strong, I think that's very attractive. It can definitely help your odds. Get more dates by becoming more confident and getting really good at any craft and just being you, man. No. <laughs> I feel like the more you live, the less days you go on. I told them to select their body type on this chart and then choose the body that they found the most attractive. Probably 57. Are you serious? I was so surprised by what people said that I had to ask some more questions. Would you be more likely to go on a date with a guy if he can bench press at least two plates? I don't care. And would you be more likely to go on a date with a guy if he has more muscle? Yes. Do you think that people who are leaner are more happy in relationships? Well. <laughs> I think it depends how lean. I think your sex drive is better when you're not lean. Okay. At the end of the survey, what I found out was that having more muscle could actually help you score more romantic partners and having a bigger bench press might help with romantic success. But there are a few things that really hurt your attractiveness. And there's one thing in particular that tanks your chances of being in a long-term relationship. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what level of muscularity women find the most attractive, whether or not people with a six pack actually score more romantic partners, and explain the single most important factor for securing a happy long-term relationship. So let's start with everyone's favorite exercise, the bench press. Do more plates really equal more dates? All right, this is how bench press strength looks for the men that I surveyed. Most guys could bench press around two plates per side as a one rep max, which I'd consider intermediate level strength. Only 5% could bench press three plates, and only a tiny sliver of you animals have ever put up four plates. My all-time best bench press is 380 pounds, by the way, so just under four plates. All right, now let's see if the bigger benchers are actually scoring more partners. Again, here on the x-axis is how much you can bench, so one plate per side, all the way up to four plates per side, and on the y-axis is how many lifetime intimate partners you've had. As you can see, more plates does, in fact, equal more dates. Men who benched more than four plates had by far the most partners with a lifetime average of 16. I found this shocking, honestly. I don't know why, I just really didn't expect there to be a trend like this. If anything, I figured the really big bench pressers would be so focused on the gym that they wouldn't have as much time or energy for getting around. I was wrong. But now that I see it this way, I think it can be explained by the fact that stronger men are perceived as more attractive by heterosexual women. Other research has shown this. And the reason it really shoots up for the four plate benchers is probably because they're more likely to be on steroids. And steroids increase libido. By a lot. Of course, not without other side effects. I was also thinking that maybe the bigger benchers have just been training longer and are therefore older and more likely to have had at least a few relationships. Maybe. But my audience falls very strongly within the 18 to 34 age bracket, with most of my followers being 25 to 34. So while age probably plays some role in this relationship, I don't think it's enough to fully explain the trend. It really does seem like the bigger benchers are getting more intimate partners. But if your bench press is your weakest lift, don't worry. Because when you look at every single survey respondent, you can see that clearly there are people with a low bench press who've had loads of partners, and clearly there are people with a big bench press without as many. Oh, and the same trend held for the squat and deadlift. More strengths meant more partners. The specific lift doesn't seem to matter much, it's the fact that you're strong that seems to count. But what about women? Do you think stronger women had more partners too, or did being stronger actually lower the partner count for women? Nope, women showed the same trend as men. More strengths meant more partners. So yes, your strength does predict your partner count, but it's not the most important thing, and it's definitely not the worst thing. We'll get to that. All right, so what body type does the best? This part was actually the most surprising to me. I want you to point to the body that you think is most attractive. So as you go down here, there's more muscle, and as you go across here, there's more body fat. I prefer a little bit of a, like not too much muscle. Okay. I think somewhere in this area over here. This, 43. 43. Okay, we're getting somewhere. One of these? So I want you to pick one. <laughs> I want you to pick, she just points to him. <laughs> Let's start with body fat. Does having a six pack actually help? or do guys with more of a dad bod get more attention? For this question, I ask men to select their level of body fat from a lineup of physiques ranging from six pack shredded to overweight. And then I ask them how many lifetime partners they've had. Obviously they could skip this question if they'd rather say it. And then I made this graph, which compared their lifetime partners to their body fat, with one being the most shredded 
and eight being the most overweight. I honestly expected it to look something like this, where the most shredded guys would do a bit worse because, I don't know, maybe they're a little too gym obsessed or narcissistic. But I figured there'd be a leanness sweet spot somewhere around level three, which is about 10 to 15% body fat. I was totally wrong. This is what it actually looked like. Your amount of body fat had zero impact on your total number of partners. It was a flat line all the way from six pack shredded to most overweight. Leaner guys weren't doing any better than heavier guys, but just because you have the same number of lifetime partners doesn't necessarily mean that you're more happy with your romantic life. And I think it's romantic satisfaction that matters more. So to fix this, I asked people to rate their romantic satisfaction on a scale of one to seven, with one being the worst and seven being the best. And then I made this graph. This time, your level of body fat did predict your romantic satisfaction. I separated out all the people who ranked their romantic satisfaction a one, so the worst possible rating, and I wanted to see if the people most frustrated with their romantic life were leaner or not. As you can see, the people with the most body fat also had the most people who rated their romantic satisfaction a one. And the same was true for women. The most romantic dissatisfaction was found in the men and the women with the most body fat. Next, I'm gonna reveal if being more jacked can help you land a happy long-term relationship. But I wanna quickly shout out Macro Factor first, just in case some of you do want some help with your diet. I'm a part owner of the app, and over the last year, I used it to help me transform my own physique and improve my health. It's just like having your own personal nutrition coach, and you'll get individualized updates to your diet each week to make sure that you hit your goals. You can download a two week trial for free at the first link below, or you can scan this QR code on screen and input code Jeff when you download the app. Okay, so what about muscle? Does being more jacked mean you'll have a better love life? Well, let's see. First, this is a graph of your muscularity and your number of intimate partners. The most jacked guys had the highest number of partners with an average of 11. Why is that? Well, again, other research does show that muscularity is positively associated with, quote, mating slash reproductive success. And I suspect the fact that it shot up again for the super jacked guys has something to do with steroids, because to get to a level eight on my scale, most people would probably need anabolics. But what about women? Did the more jacked women also have more intimate partners, or did it flip the other way? Well, let's see. There you go. Same trend here. The more muscle that women had, the more partners they had. But let's be honest, who really cares about your total number of intimate partners? What people really want is a loving and healthy relationship. So the real question is, does being more muscled increase your chances of being in a relationship? Let's bring the data in. As you can see, the people with less muscle were also less likely to be in a relationship. And the people with more muscle were more likely to be in a relationship. And I think it's pretty incredible that simply gaining some muscle could increase your chances of being in a relationship by about 20%. I mean, even getting to a level five or a level six seems to help, and that level of muscular development is well within the natural range. Of course, all of these graphs are just correlations. They can't tell us what causes what. Could be that people who are more muscled are more confident and therefore more likely to actually approach women. It might not be the muscle per se. So to figure out exactly which body type women like the most, I figured I'd just ask them straight up. Which body do you find most attractive? Just point to what level of muscularity you think is most attractive. This one, okay. As you can see, one is the least muscular and five is the most muscular with four being around the upper limit of what's achievable naturally. These results were pretty wild. The most attractive physique was level three or 41% of women said they found level three the most attractive. Only 10% of women found level five most attractive. In fact, more women preferred the second level of muscularity than the fifth level of muscularity and that's coming from my audience, women presumably already more into the gym and possibly biased toward a more muscular look. I think men should be encouraged by this because level two is easily attainable with a relatively healthy diet and just one or two full body workouts per week. While to get to level five, you not only need to spend a lot more time in the gym, you'd also probably need to supplement anabolics and deal with their less than desirable side effects. But here's the incredible part. Next, I asked men which level of muscularity they wanted for themselves. What was their goal level of muscle? I want you to notice how different it is from what women said they found the most attractive. Most men said they wanted a level four muscularity, but level five wasn't far behind at 33%. One third of men said they wanted the highest level of muscularity. I think this is worth highlighting. Only 10% of women said they found level five most attractive, 
while 33% of men are chasing this physique. That's a big gap. Almost no, nobody selected down So here. what's the point of me getting there then? That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> um, honestly, I had uh, two sandwiches today. I, I started here and now I'm here. I would love to be... Honestly, 28 is pretty great. Yeah? 28. Okay. Do you want to know what she thought was the most attractive? She definitely picked eight. <laughs> she picked eight. Now, I'm obviously not saying that men should only train to impress women, but since many men do train, at least partly with the goal of attracting women, and on average, women don't prefer level five as much, and since getting to level five would potentially impose health risks, for some, it might be worth reconsidering your goal. But out of all of this, I still haven't told you what helps the most and I still haven't told you what hurts the most. Out of everything I analyzed in my survey, the strongest correlation with dating parameters was, oddly enough, bench press strength. Do you think you'd be even more likely still to go out with a guy if you could bench press three plates? Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Men who could bench more seem to go on more dates, be more likely to be in a relationship, and just do better romantically overall. But then I started thinking, maybe there's something even more important that I missed. After all, I didn't ask any questions about height or facial masculinity. So I did some digging and discovered that there's basically an entire field of science dedicated to answering this exact question. The biggest study I could find was this meta-analysis, which looked at more than 170,000 subjects. It took six stereotypically masculine traits and figured out which one was most closely linked to mating and reproductive success. The six traits were height, voice pitch, facial masculinity, testosterone levels, index finger to ring finger ratio, and strength and muscularity. Out of these six physical traits, which do you think was most strongly linked to mating success? Maybe it was height or voice pitch? It was actually strength and muscularity. But if you dig into the data, all six of these traits combined only accounted for about 5% of the variance in mating outcomes. In other words, these six things that everyone fixates on don't account for 95% of what goes into romantic success. So the non-physical stuff is more important to you? Yeah, 100%. You can't have a great body if he's like stupid or just like doesn't have values. It's like you're out. Of course, physical attributes do matter. And I think some of the best things you can do in this regard are making sure that you're well-groomed, you smell good, you practice good hygiene, take care of your teeth, you find a hairstyle that works for your face, and you dress with a style that fits your body shape. But even more important, believe it or not, is being a good person. Being kind to others is consistently rated as one of the most attractive qualities for people of all genders and sexual orientations. The real reason that women seem to dislike nice guys is that when women picture a nice guy, they're thinking of someone who's needy, clingy, and desperate. But it's the neediness and the clinginess that's unattractive, not the niceness. If you're someone who has their shit together, meaning you take care of yourself, you set goals, and you have other cool stuff going on in your life, and you're kind to others, you're going to come off as much more attractive than someone who's just a jerk or an asshole. In my searching, I uncovered this classic study where researchers compared jerks to so-called nice guys. Only 7% of women picked the jerk, and the kinder the man was portrayed, the more desirable he was. And even when the researchers made the jerk more handsome, he still lost 85% of the time. And to really put the nail in the coffin for this myth, this study surveyed heterosexual, bisexual, and homosexual men and women. In all cases, intelligence and kindness were ranked as being more important than physical attractiveness, except for heterosexual men who ranked physical attractiveness in between kindness and intelligence. Still, for women of all sexual orientations, kindness and intelligence mattered the most. And being mean or a bully to other people seems to be one of the least attractive things you can do. I'm not gonna hate for this, but I think that when, like, when there's when you see a guy that's like so lean, so muscular, like I've had like instances where like they're just so like, I'm sorry, like full of ego, right, you right. know. And it's that's like for me, that's for sure a turn off. Like gotcha. I rather like having like a nice guy, you know, talk to me, right. like, yeah. But then I'm rather like yo, yo, I'm like yo, I'm just a strong guy, yeah. Okay. Obviously, I'm not saying that the physical stuff doesn't matter. It does but the physical stuff that matters the most is probably more within your control than you realize. Like, just working out seems to help, and there's plenty of stuff outside of your looks that might matter even more. It's what's on the inside that will make me stick around. Physical is like what you're gonna be initially attracted to, but that's not gonna last forever, so definitely personality is what I'm gonna look at the most. As far as I can tell, being a kind person and not taking yourself too seriously is probably your quickest way to becoming a more attractive person especially if you're looking for long-term romantic success. Becoming the best version of yourself also entails taking care of your health and your fitness. 
So if you are interested in losing fat, building muscle, or both, I strongly recommend checking out my gold standard nutrition app, Macrofactor. We just recently hit 150,000 active users, so this isn't another small-time influencer app, and there are already thousands of people who've transformed their body and health by using the app. Unlike most other diet apps, we don't punish you for missing days here and there or send you stressful alerts, so you can be more chill about your diet while balancing other aspects of your life and still achieve your goals. Macrofactor uses the most up-to-date scientific literature to power its algorithms, and its recommendations are custom-tailored to your metabolism specifically. If you'd like to try it out for yourself, you can scan the QR code code over here next to my head, or you can click the first link in the description box down below and enter code Jeff after you download. That'll get you a two-week trial for free, so you can try it out first before you commit. All right, that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.